questions. And uh, Robbie, I think I saw your hand raised first, so you go ahead. Uh, yeah, Shay, how excited are you to um, take part in this rivalry for the first time? I, I am extremely excited. And obviously I'm, I'm starting to understand uh, the whole Middle Tennessee and, and the Tennessee, all, all the rivalries that exist in the basketball, the women's basketball down here. But like I told our team, and I, and I really mean this, um, from playing and coaching, one of the things that I learned that's kind of carried me through my career has been that I've always tried to treat every game the same. And the way that I prepare for the games as a player, the way that I prepare as a coach now and try to have my players prepare, every single game on our schedule is the, the next game is the most important one. And that way, when, when we become the team that I think we're going to be, uh, then, you know, they'll know when we go into championship games that we're not going to prepare any differently. They don't need to feel any differently. They don't need to do anything differently. So every day we prepare like a championship team. And that was probably one of the greatest lessons I learned at UConn because our preparation was the same for the first game of the season as it was for the last. And so our players knew exactly what we were going to do. And I think they drew confidence from that. So while I know it's an important game, um, obviously, and, and, and the rivalry and all the things that come along with that game, I want my players to understand that we continue to put our head down and we do the work and we choose to do that every single day. No matter who we're playing, no matter how many people in the stands tomorrow are for Vanderbilt or for Tennessee, that kind of stuff we can't control. We play who's on our schedule. The people that come to the game are the people that come to the game. I was listening to a podcast this morning. I love podcasts. It's my new thing. Um, and it was, it, it was a really interesting analogy that the guy that was doing the podcast made about um, when, you, when a, an adversity hits and it's like a tsunami or a big wave, right? And when we go in, into the beach and we go into waves and we stand up, and we, and, we, and we look around at all, the, all of what's happening and you get scared, that wave knocks you right on your butt, right? You just get knocked, cracked right on your back. But if you put your head down and you dive right at the wave and you lean in to the difficulty of it and embrace the fact that it's coming right at you and you don't focus on it, um, you beat it. You go underneath it, you don't feel its impact and you're ready for the next wave. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about us putting our head down and doing the work. Every, every game we play this year is gonna be a tough game. It's going to be hard. No games are going to be easy. No games mean more than, than the other game. But I am really excited. You know, obviously, I, we had our own rivalry when I played Tennessee at UConn. So it's going to be great to have them in our building tomorrow. And it'll be another opportunity um, for us to do what we love. Are you? So, you know, you just mentioned the rivalry that you had with Tennessee when you were at UConn. What was your experience in that rivalry? What were some of your memories from um, playing or coaching against Tennessee back then? You know, as a young, immature kid, I just remember getting so sick of that song. <laughs> that Rocky Top, you know, like, oh, gosh, if they play it one more time, um, and then all the orange, when you go and play at their gym, they, it's so much orange. And that's not, again, nothing that I could control, but the memories flood back. But in terms of competing in the games, I just remember they were hard fought. And um, my mom knew Pat Summit and, and she recruited me and she was such a passionate coach. You always knew her teams were going to come out um, like fired up and play really hard and try to do all the little things that were really well known for their pressure defense back in the day. So I remember in our championship game, getting like a hundred backdoor layups and that was a lot of fun. But I also remember we lost to them that year and it was my fault because Samika Randall split the trap and made like the only jump shot of her career and we lost by one. Um, so this, it's little moments like that, that I remember part, the part of the journey um, to winning that national championship that year because it was the only final four that I played in. But every time we played Tennessee, it was a hard fought game. And that was the rivalry in women's basketball uh, back in the day. So when I played, which was back in the day. <laughs> so it, it, was, uh, it was a really fun time. But what I'm starting to understand in this conference is that every single game carries some sort of rivalry feel to it, right? You, you talk about who we're playing against and, and what buildings are tough to play against and who stands where in the conference. And um, that's, that's a pretty cool thing to be part of. So I'm excited to learn more, but really honestly, the opportunity to just play tomorrow 
and to see how much better we got from the last game and to compete against a team like Tennessee, who is a top five team in the country, um, that's a, it's a really awesome opportunity for our team. Hi, Cora. Welcome. Go ahead. Hi, thanks. Um, I just want to ask a follow up because you this is your first time facing Kelly Harper as a coach, but this is not your first time facing Kelly. You knew her as Jolly back then. So is this kind of a full circle moment for you to be facing her now with her at Tennessee and you at Vanderbilt? Yeah, it is. It is. I've always admired her. She was a tough opponent as a player and she's had an incredible coaching career. I also admire what she's doing at Tennessee um, because even though she wasn't the first coach to follow Pat, that's not an easy job to take after a legend, you know, after someone's been there and done legendary things that takes somebody special to do what she's doing and doing and doing the job that she's doing tells you the kind of person and coach that she is. Um, I've always respected her. I'm looking forward to seeing her tomorrow to coaching against her. I always love going up against uh, an incredible competitor. It's one of my favorite things to do in life in sports. So it'll be a fun time. Do you have any other questions for Coach Robbie? You got another one? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, after the first two SEC games and, you know, having played Arizona, another really good team, what do you hope that your team can, can take from these prior games against very tough opponents that you've already played this season? Yeah, you know, there, there's a lot that I hope we take and a lot that I hope we get rid of. And, you know, I, right now our team is a little bit, I'm going to screw this up. It's like what, what Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you know, we play a certain way and it's, you know, you see our potential and then we play that way for a little bit. And then for like four or five minutes span, we don't. And then you see the other side of, of who we are. And I would like to um, lessen those moments. And, and the, those moments are very impactful for the games that we've lost. Um, and I think we're getting there. It's a process. I can be impatient sometimes. That's one of my, you know, I, I want things to happen right away. Um, but you, you really got to trust the process. And those are the things that I talk to my team about and the consistency of it and the patience and the perseverance and understanding that every, every deposit we make every single day will be a withdrawal that we can take out and that we can't take any shortcuts and hard work. Um, you know, I was telling our team today, so it's going to be hard what we're doing, who we're playing against. Most people don't like hard work. Sometimes my team doesn't like hard work, but you can't not like hard work and then not like being average or not like being mediocre. Those two contradict each other. So if you want something different, then you have to be willing to do those things and make those deposits. And it can't just happen on game day. And so we're learning what it means to be a great team, that it doesn't just happen on game day. Um, that it doesn't happen because we had a good week of practice or that we played a great game against Arizona. We're, we have to keep building on that because it, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist or a great coach to look at our two rosters and see, you know, where, where our weaknesses lie for the game tomorrow, right? And the things that we're going to have to do, we're going to have to be extremely disciplined in doing those. We, I told them in, in, uh, after Mississippi State, if we, don't, if we are not the team that outworks our opponent every night, we will not win another game. But if we are, then we could win every game on our schedule. So the choice is ours to make, but that doesn't just happen. You have to work at it. Are you? What does it mean to you to kind of contribute to some of the history of women's basketball in the state of Tennessee, whether that's, you know, Pat Summit's legacy or even Vanderbilt's own history, having been a final four team, you know, in the 1990s? I don't, ever, I, don't, I don't think I've ever thought of it that way. It's, it's a good question to pose. I think, I, I think of it more as in a big picture kind of way. Um, when I was a player, I had several people ask me if I would coach. And I remember watching what my coaches did. I was in and out of the office and they were there all the time. Always like, and it was when we, they, we used VCRs, you know, like a whole wall of VCRs and 18 TVs and they're watching film all day. I was like, I'm not doing that. No way. That's too, that work, that's too much hard work. I'm not doing that. Um, but then as I went on as a player and understood the impact that my coaches had on me and how that changed my life, um, then that's what I wanted to do. So when I think about, you know, what you're talking about with the, you know, having an, a legacy here or, or, you know, what Pat did and being able to build on that, I think about just the impact that I want to have on my players and that I want to have on the program here at Vanderbilt, but more so for women's basketball overall. And 
I know if I hadn't had the coaches that I did in my life, I would not be sitting here. I would not be the person that I am. I would not have achieved the things that I did. And so for me, I, every day I think about that. You know, I want to show up and make and make a positive impact because it's it, that's me paying it forward. That was done for me. Or did you have another? Yeah, I have one more question. Um, you mentioned this briefly earlier, but your mother was also somewhat of a trailblazer herself playing alongside Pat Summit in the World University Games. You know, has Tennessee always kind of had a special place in your heart, even though you played at UConn, you know, because your mother has that history? It did. You know, my, my mom and Pat were friends. And so I think my, when I was really young, like six or seven, my mom called Pat, like, I think my daughter can play, but I'm her mom, so I might be biased. And uh, I'm going to bring her to your camp. I think the age was like nine, the cutoff age, but I got to go earlier. And, uh, and I remember seeing Pat pull up a chair, like a fold up chair at the corner of the court that I was playing on and just watch me play. Um, and, and understanding like the relationship that my mom had with her and the time that Pat spent with me and, uh, and the, and then watching her coach, you know, and, and, and it's just, the, the, the friendship that they had um, gave me an opportunity to do something that maybe other players and, and kids my age wouldn't have been able to do. I went to her camp every year and she gave me honest feedback and made me a better player. I know I didn't go there. I think most people thought that I was going to go there. Um, but there was a, <laughs> I made the right decision for me, but it was a close one. It was a close call.